Okay, I think we are ready to go. Kathy? Thanks, Roy, and, and Susan, thanks for inviting me back to do a little bit of follow-up. You're not the only one that has had questions, and um, so I'm happy to um, revisit this. Um, certainly, it's not going to be so much my answers as it's going to be answers from the Project Core website and take people to the Project Core website. Um, and some of the updates and information that they've added, including what they call the sandwiches that I talked to last time, which is some, some sort of teaching scripts that, that go along with things. All right, so where's my... All right, so hello, bonjour. Yeah, we can do that. Um, so welcome. For those of you who may not have done this before, um, welcome to this uh, webinar on the 3D tactile symbols. What I'd like you to, to make sure that you do do is go back and take a look at the archived introductory session that uh, is on the ERLC website. Hopefully most of you have done that and that this will be a welcome back either um, re in reality or a welcome back um, because you've seen this virtually be, uh, prior to coming here because so, I'm not going to be reviewing very much stuff at all. Um, after last year's session, there was a big flurry <laughs> of interest, and I know that the, the makerspace at the library downtown in Edmonton was overwhelmed almost with people requests, and that people were really excited about springing into action because prior to this, we really didn't have a very good way to put core vocabulary in the hands, literally in the hands of our kids who have significant visual impairments and complex communication needs. Um, I'm just going to pause here for a little minute and we're going to try and get a little bit of participation from our If you want to put it into the chat, that might be best. And I've got the chat up as well. So I'm just curious if you would share if you've printed the symbols, if you have been using them, how you've been using them, and maybe if some questions have come up as you've been doing this. So um, as I said, if you want to, I'll pause here and just let people enter into the chat, if you will. Oh, and if you're going to enter it into the chat, please send it to everyone, not just to Roy. <laughs> okay, people mouth the symbols. Yep. Okay, good. That makes sense. People have got them but haven't used them yet. Okay, thanks, Georgie. Same, Kathleen, yep, cool. Not use them yet. So I'm sure kids will mouth them. And actually, I was talking with uh, Cynthia Pond at the Glen Rose. And OK, started with one symbol. That's cool. We're going to talk about that. Um, student threw them. Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that's quite possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that that's, that's quite possible. I don't think they'll hurt. Well, I suppose they could hurt if they got thrown with enough um, venom. What I will talk about is the mouthing them. You know, one of the advantages of these symbols is that they certainly can be cleaned, and um, some of the other kinds of tax tools are a little bit harder to do that. So, and I'm sure that our kids will do that, which is one of the reasons why they were, one would pause before making them any smaller, even though you could. All right, good. Any other questions, concerns before we start? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to just a, sorry, there you did your sharing already. Just a couple of little reminders that, you know, really what we're doing here is we're going to assume that we're um, uh, abstract symbols, that we're going to not worry about a symbol hierarchy, and we're going to just use these symbols with them consistently. The power of core vocabulary is vocabulary that's flat and can be used across lots of different contexts. So I'm going to share something that uh, I got with Karen, or from Karen uh, yesterday when I told her that I was doing this webinar, which is the power of these symbols come when we have multiple times uh, opportunities to use them daily basis. So lots of repetition with variety. Um, and then, um, okay, I'm going to skip by that, that really our kids, you know, communication is purposeful, but it doesn't start out that way, um, that kids get spoken to for 12 to 18 months before we expect them to understand a single word. So the fact that we might have to be giving these kids to uh, 
two kids for a long time consistently with in many repetitions before they start actually using them expressively is something that shouldn't be too surprising. Um, and in fact, but it, one of the things that it will be is might be a little bit challenging for people. And again, those of you in the CCN world have seen me and others use these slides quite a lot in the fact that we really have to be using and in this case, the textual aided language with kids if we're expecting them to ever learn to use them with us, all right? Um, for our kids with visual impairments, you know, the preponderance of symbols that we use in the AAC world are visual. And so having tactual symbols is a really important thing, especially for kids who are blind or severely um, visually impaired. Um, there are some of the other ones that have been around in the, uh, in the world. These can all be thrown in mouths too, but reproducing them is harder, cleaning them is harder, and um, they, think they tend to have one opportunity to say that you're, or maybe, maybe snack would be twice in a day, lunch would be once in a day. So once you've shared that symbol once that day, meaningfully, you haven't got another opportunity, whereas the, the core vocabulary symbols um, we have lots of opportunities. I'm going to skip by this. So again, just a reminder of what core vocabulary is, is that it's the kind of vocabulary that you use across all kinds of different contexts. So you, um, you might use the word go in a classroom 50 times. We're going to go here, we're going to go there, we're going to go out, we're going to go in, we're going to go uh, sit down. And that word, it, it, you could use it in gym, you could use it in um, art. You can you, you go get your it in uh, at lunch. Uh, go get your lunch. So that's the power of these words. Is with a few words you have something to say in multiple contexts. And also, um, yeah, Marin, we're going to talk about that too as well. Um, that's great. So what I want to do is uh, take you now to Project Core because there are some things there, and I'm going to the PowerPoint. Ha come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I didn't say the technology prayer. Sorry, guys. Okay, I see what's going on. Okay, so Project Core. Um, we did go there last time, but I, what I want to do is take, oh, fiddle dee dee, that's not Project Core, that's my email. You don't need to watch that. Sorry. And now I'm going to, I'm not going to do voice search, I'm going to do Project Core. Sorry guys, I don't know what this is all about. Either. My apologies. Yeah, you're going to reply to that dating uh, app that just popped up? Uh, no. Uh, okay, that's good. The last, that's the last thing I would do in my life, Roy. Very <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. Um, I'm blocking it, actually. So I'm just going to take you through some of the things that are here. One of the things that they have now are some vignettes of different kids. And Jade is their child that um, they're thinking that they bring forth on their, at their using as a, uh, a young person who would be using um, the uh, tactual symbols. So you can see here that, and we're going to talk about the fact that they're being very intentional now on introducing the first three symbols that you introduce are um, go, not, and want, and that those, and you can see here with Jade, this sort of goes to one of the things that you asked, Marin, is how to make them available after for expressive language. So what they've done here, which I think is quite neat, um, they've made them available so that she can feel in front of her, and I'm assuming that they're going to put them in a relatively same location all um, so that she can do that. But uh, that's one of the things in the uh, a follow-up uh, information that they got, that they've given to me here, is that that's one of the things that they're really saying, is that you need to think about having a plan to organize the symbols and how the symbols are going to be organized not only for receptive language um, support, which is teaching them, uh, 
um, the meaning of the symbols, but then ultimately how they're going to be organized and available if we're expecting the child to use them expressively. This is one way. Another way that is they do not have shown here, but um, the reason that the symbols all have the little open hook on the top is to put them on something like a lanyard that would go around your neck or a, a uh, lanyard that are or something that would be perhaps hooked to a wheelchair or to a belt so that the child is taking them with them on a, on a rope de facto, and then they would be available on that rope likely in, and be put there in the same order so that that would give another um, consistent information or consistent way to have them available um, for the child ultimately to have something that's new on, on the think is pretty helpful. Um, the other thing that's new, and Susan, um, uh, you, um, we talked about this, or no, I don't know if we did talk about this, I think we did, is that they have something called a universal core selection tool. Well, that's saying, and this is a question that's come up for me um, quite a lot, um, is, well, this child has CDI, do we use them with a, uh, when the kid has CDI? Or when do we choose these instead of, and I'll maybe go back to uh, this in a minute, when do we choose the 3D symbols versus doing something like enlarged uh, symbols that are um, have good visual contrast, like like not go, uh, want the, the uh, uh, four square universal when, when we might do these versus um, partner-assisted scanning. So this little tool that you have uh, that we'll look at quickly together um, is a very um, simple and, and uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Sort of screener, I would suggest, more than anything else. Um, that that might help. So I'm going to move my chat so that I can. Oh come on, it. Sorry guys. There. Okay, I'm going to move my chat so I can see. So here's and the, this is a bit of annoyance, but they're doing this so they can see who's in. And I'm going to have been in there quite a bit already. And I'm and I don't have a school system, and I don't know consultant. I'll say. And the state. This, I'm sorry that you have to do this, but I thought I'll show you. You just go other. And then uh, email, I'll use my U of A email. When I, you have to do this every time. It's annoying. But, and we're not from there, so I'm from Canada. So they're getting, they're getting, um, they're getting information for their research project. So does the student have any useful vision? And so um, what would you like me to say, yes or no? Susan? Hello? There we go. We're having a hard time unmuting. The answer is no. Okay. The answer would say no. And I will go forward. No useful vision. And guess what? These are the kids that you're going to um, consider the 3D tactile symbols or the four in line universal using partner assisted scanning with auditory presentation of the options. So there are two possibilities here. Um, and, and, and Kathy, I've just unmuted. Hello, Kathy. We're not going to talk about partner scanning today very much, but I will tell you that there is information about how to do that on the website too. So if you're that Kathy, are you able to hear me? Hello, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Kathy, you're cutting in and out. I'm not sure if it's if Hello. it's what did you do? Uh, I'm just saying that you are cutting out. I'm not sure. You what? Uh -oh. You're cutting out. And I'm not sure if it's because of your if you're because of your uh, internet link. 
I'm speaking. I'm now. Uh oh. Kathy, I'm not sure if it's uh, because of your uh, you're running this uh, internet link at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's probably is dry. Uh, um, you probably don't have enough of a uh, enough bandwidth in in. Minute. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. You can hear me. I now? think you've got a dip. Yes, I think you need to ditch this uh, this other. Okay, all right. Hey everyone, I'm sh I think that Kathy has disappeared to try and uh, log on again. Uh, so we'll Kathy just wait. She's not in this. back. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I'll pass you the ball again. I'm on a different uh, computer, so let's see how this goes. Okay. All right. Sorry, guys. My apologies. I will not open the website. I will talk about what's on the website, which I can do perfectly fine. So, all right. So, um, Project Core, I'm going to do it like this, and I can get not, 
Kathy, I'm not seeing your screen. Oops, yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting kerflummoxed from that little experience there. Sorry, I will uh, share my screen. That's a good idea. That's not my screen. Whose screen is that? Oh, that's Christy's screen. Somehow that moved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to stop right now and we're going to say, let's share the technology prayer right now. I'm going to share. Christy will stop as soon as I start. All right, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Good. That's it. Okay, so we're not going to go to Project Core just in case, although it might work on this computer. Um, and Project Core, as you guys no, um, has lots of different information, some of which is going to be new. One of the things that I was showing you is that they have a now on Project Core a way to make some decisions or to give some guidance as to which of these symbol sets um, might be the ones that you would be most likely to consider um, at the front end. There are a variety of symbol sets beyond which the 3D symbols that are here. Um, the, the, our little assessment that we just did suggested the 3D symbols or the inline universal core partner assisted communication book. And the other thing that they have now on the project core site is both information on how you would introduce and use the 3D symbols, as well as some nice information on how you would use a partner-assisted communication book. So that would be likely for kids that um, could certainly could not see, who have good audit, can hear well, and for whom the symbols just they, they couldn't hold them in their hands, or there's just no way that it's going to work for them. So. Um, Partner-assisted auditory scanning is something that's used in a variety of different AAC systems. So, but today we're here to talk about the 3D tap tools. Um, and again, just to remind you that this, they don't have all the core vocabulary. The current set has go, like, not, do, don't, blah, blah. There's the list. Um, and this is just a little uh, descriptor of them. I think most people are familiar. The idea that they're designed to hit into a small, fit into a small hand. You can print them smaller, and um, I understand that they have printed them smaller for some kids. But again, based on Marin's experience that they go to the mouth, I probably would be quite leery about doing that. And then again, this is uh, the idea that they have a way to string them together. Um, for those of you who are uh, uh, SLPs or teachers or, or care, um, they have that the, the uh, part of speech is dictating what shape they are and then um, uh, the color. So um, these they've got uh, some rules that they're following in terms of making them and there will likely be more symbols as well. Um, the benefits, we talked about that before, they're reproducible, they're relatively easy to produce, low cost, and we can change in size. So I'm not going to show them. This is um, where, because if we do that, we might lose you again. This is where I was uh, going with the uh, universal selection tool. It's right at the front page of the universal symbols, and you can help you to determine, um, and you can be suggested what a likely good place to start is. And as I said, we just did a little bit of that before we crashed. Um, the new information that is um, up on, or actually this isn't exactly up yet, but it's going to be up very soon on Project Core, is what are the symbols that we should be starting with. And um, they are now saying you start with the following three symbols, go, like, and not. Um, because they're flexible enough to use across environments to meet a variety of needs. Um, the first piece of this is to identify activities that involve movement, like go, that the student that that the student enjoys, like like. So you're looking for things that they like to do, student enjoyment, and displeasure or refusal. So um, every time one of these opportunities occur, they place the 3D symbol. Uh, for go like or not in the student's dominant hand, um, or if the student has a hearing impairment, they sign in their uh, other hand um, uh, the word, and then you, uh, once the opportunity, once the thing has happened, the symbol gets removed. So if you're going, you go, and then the symbol gets removed. 
Um, so examples of it. Um, each time the student's going to move, use the opportunity to teach go. So movement would be moving around the school, moving from one position to another. Um, it's or moving from one place. It's time to go to group or something. Um, and then they look for signs with the like. You look for signs of pleasure. So um, student smiles in response to a song. We think you like that. You're smiling. We think you like that. And you put the, the, the um, symbol in the dominant hand, if you know what the dominant hand is. Um, you know, uh, laughing like, um, smiling, or a pleasant facial expression. So really, a lot of this involves understanding clearly the, the children's current communicative behaviors that tell you whether they like something or they don't like something. And then go is more about environment and looking for opportunities to do a movement. And then you introduce uh, the symbols in those contexts and you do it over and over again. And then the, the question that they next ask on, on this other site, this will be, I'm sure will be up very soon on their site, is when do you introduce the next, other than these three these symbols, uh, other than these first three symbols? And they say uh, that they don't begin to introduce additional symbols until the student is beginning to reach for or otherwise indicate some beginning understanding that these three initial symbols have meaning that they have meaning. That doesn't mean that they want them to use or identify them independently, but we want them to show some emerging understanding before we start to introduce more. So, okay, so you're sticking with these until you have some sense. And it's going to be, I would say, clinical sense that, oh, they, they're understanding that these things mean something. It doesn't mean that they understand the word go and that the symbol means go, that they're not, they're, it's not clear um, you're not looking for, Karen's always big on not looking for mastery, you're looking for an indication that they're understanding those symbols. Um, and then when you're ready to add new symbols, you really have to have that plan for organizing them, whether it's, um, where is that, whether it's on a, I, as I said, I really like this. If the child's in a wheelchair, this is dead easy. Um, or maybe even if the child isn't in a wheelchair, if there's a consistent place that the symbols get Placed. This is there'd be Velcro on the back of those ones. Um, however, it is you have to think about how they're going to be doing that. The other really important key message on this this handout that they've created is that symbols that are not used dozens of times a day can't be learned. So you really need to look for opportunities to use these three symbols dozens of times a day for each one of them, which is again why these ones are so powerful. On the site right now, they do have an example teaching script. I'm not going to go there, but if you, uh, these are the sandwiches that I talked about last time. Um, so um, I encourage you, maybe after the webinar or tomorrow or whenever, or even right now while you're listening to me, go to Project Core, take a look at these scripts, and they get really specific um, instructions. Now, Susan and I were talking earlier, they say to sign in the hand, the other hand. Well, that's if the child can't hear or if the child has some kind of understanding of uh, sign in hands, great, do that. If they don't have that understanding, try and give them something that's going to indicate. Um, and really, it's more about you looking at them and interpreting, just like we do kids, that you're interpreting that the baby smiled. Oh, you like this. Or the baby is frowny face. You don't like this. And for those of you who have used the communication matrix to gather information about how the student is currently communicating, you would be looking for those kinds of um, uh, behavior, or, um, pleasure and uh, be behaviors that indicate pleasure and behaviors that indicate negation or unpleasure. And I kind of, I think you get that. Um, so they have some of these new resources um, that are there. As I said, I've got the slide out of order. So, and the new resources are, they're going to have this resource up very shortly. And then they've got these, um, sandwiches or scripts or teaching scripts that they suggest. Now, part of that is a suggestion. Use your own, you know, I think the most important thing here is that you want to start with the three, involve activities that involve movement, student enjoyment, or student refusal, and ha do it over and over and over and over again. Okay. Um, the other thing that Lori said, Lori Geist, who is also 
um, really she's the lead, I think, right now on the Project Core research, is that other questions that they've been getting is about the tactual, sim, uh, the tactual printers themselves. What kind of printer should we have? Um, what, you know, what level of uh, kind of, so I had a question yesterday from Cynthia Pond at the Glenrose saying, do we have to use a really high-end special printer with really good, I don't know what you call it, plastic ink? or can just your local little 3D printer um, work? And so they're working on a project core, a, um, some, inform uh, some information to start to, um, sorry, start to share some information about the uh, tactual printers and the things that you should be doing, sort of those more technical questions, because they're getting lots of those. So they're looking to add something to the project core site around that as well. So, sorry that I don't dare go out. Maybe from this computer it would work better, but I'd rather perhaps not go out and lose you again. Um, any questions or um, chat or uh, that, that questions that you have, thoughts that you have? Has this been helpful? You can put it in the chat or you can grab the mic if you have one. I'm hearing silence. Susan, anything? Um, so, Kathy, we, you talked about the three, go, light, and not. Um, sh now, should they just be introduced one at a time or all three? All three, all three at a time because okay. they're also teaching it's a little bit of, this, you know, that there's different, um, yeah, oh, and you know, three at a time so that the kids can learn that there's different meanings attached to them um, and so that you can so you can start to actually um, noticing that they're different. So, yeah, the three, teach doing three at a time. And Darlene, no, it, um, it's not, modeling the universal core is not where this is. It is, let me go to the site. If you go to the, the universal core, um, shoot. And get it out in front of me. Um, yeah, Chrome didn't shut down properly. No kidding. So we go to Project Core. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll walk you through it at least. Um, and you go to Universal Communication System. Um, then you've got. Oh, sorry. Then you go on the side to Implementation Resources. And the Implementation Resources is the place that you're going to find 3D symbol use. You're going to find some, some tips and tricks for teaching yes and no for the kids that who are going to be partner-assisted scanning. Uh, modeling universal core is sort of just generally for kids that are using universal core. So for the, what we talked about today, you're going to be looking for the 3D symbol use and click on that. Um, and then if you're, and we did touch a little bit on uh, partner assisted scanning, but um, I don't think we want to talk about that very much. And again, as I said, there'll be more information coming uh, very soon um, around the stuff that I shared about the three and how to, a little bit more about how to do that. So, and Roy, I saw your message and. and Kathy, just another question then. Um, what about home use? Like, would you suggest those families that you know would follow through, or would you would you have a set for home of those three symbols too, and work with the parents on some consistency and how to introduce that at home? So weekends. And yeah, and the the more repetitions with variety that the kid is going to have over the course of the day, the more likely they're going to learn those symbols have meaning, and the more likely it is that they're going to ultimately gravitate to using them themselves. So, um, yeah, so Makerspace, uh, I know that there's a 3D, I've worked, used the 3D printer at um, the U of A. I don't know if they if they will sell universe, uh, time. And I think that lots of high schools these days, and Juliana, thank you, I think lots of high schools have 3D printers as well. So now this might be the time, again, where we might have to go back and, and ask Lori for the same question that other people did. So, yeah. Juliana, what was their uh, answer? Yay! Awesome. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> and Kathy. Yep.
Yes. Hello. No. Ask again. The the throwing part, the the concerns about kids throwing them. Do you just like pick them back up and put them back in the hands? Just pick them back up and put them in their hands and give it to them again. And remember, this is a really short period of time, right? We're we're wanting to get the. They don't have to have them there for the whole time of. Well, I guess going, if you're going a long way, you might. And if they're, you know, if you're really concerned about them throwing them and hurting somebody, that might be the time that I would um, put them on a, on a string and, and have them attached to them so they can't throw them, right? They're going to just, they're not going to go anywhere. So I think we just have to be a bit clever. And if it's, you know, I suppose, and the other thing, if it's really becoming a problem, then maybe that isn't the right the solution for them, and maybe we go to partner assisted auditory scanning, but that's a big um, commitment from communication partners. So I would say um, people that, that used to be a question that I got all the time about using um, um, trackballs and stuff with kids too. And you know, if if their kids, if we're consistent, and if the kids are doing something that's interesting, um, the throwing will get old. I think. Hmm. Um, if you've already introduced the word more, I wouldn't go back, but uh, I, um, I know and that's, that's how I was doing it, Juliana, having the team um, say what words would be really important and um, or a lot, many times a day, uh, but don't use it just with food. You, you, the trick is you need to use repetition with variety. More this, more that, more the other, more and uh, more toys, right? So I think that's really important. And so what I might do there is add in not because not more, and I might add in go because more and and like are kind of really close in meaning comparatively, I suppose, or more close in meaning than the other two. That would be my suggestion, not and go, and more would be your first three because you've already introduced more. Does that make sense? So just one other quick question, Kathy. This, the three symbols could conceivably be a year in progress, right? Like this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You're not, you know, and probably not, but it could. I mean, that's, a, that's my whole point again why I want to talk about the fact that uh, and it, you know, you can probably make the make it not so long if, in fact, you're doing more repetition with variety. Um, but yeah, we and and you know, I think we have a tendency for kids with, who are complicated to um, to do it till we're bored, not until they're bored. So yeah, I absolutely, Susan. Yeah. Okay. Kathy, I have a question. Can you hear sure. me? It's Janice. Hi. Yeah, sure can. Hi. I'm just. Um, we we have made them, and then we weren't quite sure who to who to use them with. But one of my questions are, and again, we haven't had a lot of experience with them, but they all feel plastic, right? There's no. I know there's different textures, but they're all plastic. Have you had had success? Has it been working? Are they able to identify? The ridges when they're quite low functioning. That would just be one of my questions. Well, I have Karen and Karen and Lori have had success, and I know that's a question that that Karen says she gets asked all the time. That people are saying there's not enough textual information, but they're having kids that are having success, and they're the ones that have been doing it for the longest. And I think um, that you know, and maybe that's the next question. I, I wish I could remember exactly what her response was to that. I, but I will send her that question, and I can make a commitment to um, doing a follow-up email to folks and saying, "Here's what Karen said." I think the bottom line is that they're having success. That kids are learning. Yeah. And yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. And Kathy, from my experience too, the 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 pros um, were it far more than the cons of having it all plastic because that is definitely something as vision teachers we always try to have a variety of textures but with these symbols there there's so many um, good things about them that the plastic is just I we I mean, just have to live with it I think yeah and and I you know and I think that the, the yeah, I agree. I, I agree. That's the best way to say it. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm 
quickly coming up to the end of my time. I'm going to say last questions. Okay, seeing none, this will be posted. And again, I do apologize for the break in all of this. I And I encourage you to go and poke around on the project course site. And if they get any other word of anything else that's coming new, I'll make sure that you get it, of course, and that we can we can send it out to folks. Okay. Excellent, excellent, Kathy. Thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time in the middle of your journey uh, south <laughs> from Edmonton. Uh, so uh, continued uh, best wishes on your travels. Take care. Thank you. Bye. And, and thank you to everyone from the CCN uh, COP. Yeah. At, this at this point, you can, uh, you can 